Hey, and welcome to an episode of Pod Talks with myself, Richie Bra, and Daniela Del Carpio. So it's been a while since we've done one of these. <laughs> Daniela and I have been super, super busy, but very mm-hmm. excited to this morning, my side and, and Daniela's evening to have this catch up. And we'll be asking some questions that some of you guys have submitted via Instagram. So we hope to try and keep some of these Q&As in over time. So definitely follow us on Instagram. Make sure you message us and ask us the questions that you want us to answer on the on these pod talks. So, Daniela, hey, how are you? Hello. Yeah, it's been crazy. I think it's been over a month, maybe a month since we recorded the last episode, which is it's wild but yeah as you say we've been busy we've been working hard guys but we're here now and we're gonna be doing the q a so you know as always guys keep asking your questions keep sending your questions through your challenges your concerns the more you ask the more we can help you the more you can learn from us and you know start applying the tips or the knowledge that we give you because if you don't ask and then you assume everything that's not gonna get you anywhere but if you the more you ask the more you want to learn so it's exactly what we're going to be doing now. And we've got a few questions here that you guys asked us. Mm. And we're going to go through that. Okay. But yeah, should we get started? Yeah, let's do it. So shall I ask you a question first? Yeah. Right. So yeah, yeah, you go first. Was, um, this is a common one that I'm seeing lots where women have asked, um, why? how can I rebuild my legs and my glutes? Like they've lost the fat but they're upset that they've now Mm. lost the muscle so what advice Mm. can you give to those yeah number one i will say it's something to help you rebuild that muscle mass or yeah that muscle mass it's to understand that for for you to help you shape those legs again and those you know your glutes help you have that really nice shape it means that you have to gain a little bit more muscle mass and for us to gain muscle mass it means two things. It means that we have to train really hard and heavy without compromising our form. And we also have to start eating a little bit more, which I know sometimes it can be very, very scary because we're so used to being in a caloric deficit. We're so used to just focusing on losing body fat. And we're very afraid of gaining muscle mass. We're very afraid of eating more because we have this idea that the more food I eat, the more weight I'm going to gain and I'm going to go back to square one and all the hard work is going to go down to waste you know all my hours spent at the gym all the hours spent cooking like that's going to go to waste but it's not like if you keep eating only let's say a thousand and five hundred calories or a thousand and two hundred calories you're going to maintain where you are and you're going to keep losing muscle mass and we don't want that we want to shape that if you want to have those amazing glutes like j-lo like kim k you need to work really hard and you need to yeah start eating more so i think just accepting the fact that for you to shape those legs again and those glutes you have to increase your calories it's not going to be from 1200 to 3000 calories overnight it's going to be like a gradual increase. So slowly, slowly, slowly. And then once you're there, it's going to feel a little bit uncomfortable. Okay. I'm going to say that because it does, especially if you're not used to it, it gets better with time. But at the beginning, it does get uncomfortable because you start feeling like, "Mm, I'm feeling heavy. I look a little bit bloated. I feel this way. But if you don't eat more, nothing's going to happen. And because you're controlling how much you're eating, it's going to be, it's going to make things easier to not gain too much body fat and focus mainly on building that muscle mass because we're going to focus on protein, getting enough carbohydrates, getting the right amount of fats. So just knowing exactly, being very specific with those macronutrients and controlling how much we're eating. And with the training, you need to train heavy and you need to train consistently. Okay, don't just train for one week, two weeks and then done. It has to be consistently and you have to focus number one on your technique because there's no point lifting 100 kgs overnight. You're simply going to get injured. You're going to maybe injure your lower back, maybe injure your legs, your quads, your glutes, any or every single muscle. You're going to stop and we don't want that. So increase our strength with time, focus on the technique and then that with time and also something else, patience. (laughs) That's going to help you shape your shape, not shape, shape your legs because muscle is not going to grow after just two months or three months or four months. It takes months and years to build that. So be patient. So, yeah, I will say those three tips. Acknowledge and accept that you have to eat more, train heavy, train hard, but smart and be patient. Those three are going to help you. 
absolutely love that, Daniela. And that's something that I want to run home as well, is that quite often, especially mm. if we've been on a weight loss, we've had a lot of weight to lose or, or even fat. Yes, there's been a calorie deficit, but there's a fixation that I don't know. I think I do know why, but women have on being a certain weight on the scales and always thinking mm. that, that dictates progress and it doesn't mm -hmm. it's a bigger picture so just to run home yeah. if you are going to be you know if you are trying to build you have to accept a you have to accept a bit of weight gain right and it's it's not yo-yoing -yo -yo back and forth you need consistency and patience those legs are not going to go bam over eight weeks and and that's it you know, it's gonna take time. So you really do have to be patient. And it's the same thing, Daniela, yeah. that I honestly I, I have to repeat myself sometimes, but it's not you and I didn't build our bodies overnight. It took years. <laughs> and even still, it's taking years because we have to consistently work at it. And it's not just gonna happen mm -hmm. overnight. So, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And also, yeah, something else I quickly want to mention about that is that just because you're eating more or training heavier, it doesn't mean that you're going to look big and bulky and like look really big and muscly and like grow your muscles like that. That's not going to happen. The only way that can happen is if you as women, you as ladies, we start doing steroids, then yeah, your muscles are going to grow very big if you train consistently over a few months, years, if you take steroids consistently over a few months and years, not just for one day or two days. So anything that we do consistently, you're going to grow your muscles. And because you're going to get more testosterone, those muscles are going to grow bigger, bigger, bigger. You're gonna, your body's going to start shaping and looking different, but that's not what we're going to do. We all going to do is just shape that body, nothing else. So don't be afraid of that. Okay. Second question. And this is also a very common question that I ask all the time. And it's to do with creatine. And it does creatine makes me gain weight. Mm, okay, interesting. Creatine doesn't make you gain weight per se. It uh, allows the muscles to retain the water, right? So because of mm -hmm. that, um, you might feel a little bit bloated or you might feel as though, I think also, I don't know if this is anecdotally, but I feel like with creatine, I'm definitely a lot more thirsty and you do actually need to drink a lot more water when you're supplementing with creatine. So again, is, is it the fact that you're having more water that's, that's making you feel like you're putting on more weight per se, or is it the case? Uh, you know, Yeah. You're not putting on more weight. I, I, I wouldn't say that. And, and the thing is with, with creatine, it's, gonna help you in so many other ways it's really really beneficial for us to have especially if you are like vegan or vegetarian because it's the thing that's going to help you recover better uh, it's going to help you um, have that imp improved um, muscle size or even performance and and, and recovery um, yeah yeah it's it's not going to make you put on weight I, I don't know where what do you think about this one yeah I think the same like you're not gonna gain like yes I know like you're not gonna gain body fat by taking creatine that's you know creatine is just that supplement to help you gain those strengths and like you say Richie like your muscles are gonna retain that water and that's why you may feel or you may look a little bit bloated but it's just water it's water retention because your muscle cells are trapping that water inside the cells and that's why they grow a little bit bigger it's like you drinking, let's say, a glass of water and then you have that one in your cheeks. You know, your cheeks go a little bit bigger because you're holding that water right there. It's the same with your muscle cells. You're holding that water and that's why you look bloated. Or that's why maybe the scale, the numbers on the scale might go up a few grams. It's, they're not going to go up by 20 kgs and that's just water retention, nothing else. But it's a good thing. And it's, yeah, it's nothing crazy. It's not like a big increase in gain weight. It's not a big increase in anything. You don't look different overnight. If anything, you're just going to gain more strength. You're going to feel it stronger. I feel like creatine is one of those supplements that actually does work. I've noticed a difference like, with my yeah. training. Yeah, yeah, it does work 100%. But as we always say, like, don't just take this supplement for the sake of taking a supplement. We need to focus on our diet first. Supplements are just there to supplement 
our diet, nothing else. But yeah, creating amazing, 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 amazing supplement. It's just water retention, bloated, yeah, maybe a little bit. But again, it's just water. You're, you're not gaining body fat. So I think, yeah, I think that answers the question. It's not gain, it's not body fat. It's just water retention, nothing else. And I think that's really interesting yeah. what you say about don't just take supplements because I think the whole purpose of you mm. is to enhance your performance. So if you're not training hard enough and that's that's the first step you need to be making sure that your diet's in check you need to be making sure that you're training you're actually doing your training it's not just I felt like it today and because I did three days this week why why have I not seen mm. a change and, and suddenly I need to to have more and I tell you what's really funny I mean we have a lot more research around the supplement creatine but years ago people used to think that creatine was like some sort of steroid yeah <laughs> Charlie, I've had that before yeah. and it's like mm -hmm. uh no it's not it's something that our bodies actually create you know mm -hmm. we have a foster yeah. creatine system that kicks in to help mm -hmm. us with you know that that muscular power etc so if you take it back to basics and you you know it's 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 great in terms of it's a natural thing that's happening in our body anyway and all we're doing is trying to enhance that system and it's it's okay to to supplement with it but make sure that you're careful on in terms of how much you're supplementing you don't just want to start mm -hmm. taking loads because yeah that's what you read on the back of the packet or um, that's what you see your partner do you need to make sure that you're taking the right amount for you um so Daniela, do you know what the specific dosage is? Would you like me to, to say? Yeah. So yeah. it should be, yeah, one scoop is five grams. Should be five grams, yeah. Yeah. Oh, per day. We could make it a bit more specific because I feel like for us women, especially if you are more petite, um, it might, again, help you not have masses amounts of creatine in the body. So it's actually 0 0.03 times your body weight in kilos and I think that's really important mm -hmm. for me to mention because I will be quite open here but recently I was just not measuring and I was necking it back and mm -hmm. I've actually had to, to yeah I've had some funny blood test results as a as a result and so mm -hmm. I'm being quite transparent there but um yeah when yeah. I was to my doctor it was like maybe you're having a bit too much so and I've spoke to another one of my like a GP friend as well and it's like very stupidly it's quite easy to kind of have too much of something so just mm. make sure that supplementation is great it's it's not going to be like you know uh, detrimental or harmful in that respect but make sure that you're having the right amount and so for example if you weigh 60 kilos um and you times that by 0.03, I might get this wrong, but it might be something like two grams a day. So it's just like half a scoop, right? For for some of us. And um, I just thought that might be worth mentioning just just as a little tip and trick, a little little one there. Mm. So yeah, hopefully that helps some of us. But yeah. Cool. Yeah, that's very yeah, that's very interesting. And about creatine, like having that amount. Yeah, I think it's easier to overdose in supplements because we think like, yeah, supplements, keratin, aminos, this and that, and it can be, it can be harmful. But I think the only one that it's not really harmful to overdose, obviously, again, you don't want to have too much, but protein, like, I think many people or many women have problems, not problems, but they're scared of taking too many scoops of protein a day because they feel like they're going to get kidney damage or they're going to get, you know, different health issues. But with protein powder, you're not gonna, you're not really gonna get that. But in saying that, you don't wanna be just relying on the protein powder to get your protein intake every single day. Like protein is amazing, and I always recommend it because I think it is a, an amazing supplement. But you wanna make sure that you're getting your protein mainly from food, things like chicken, steak. If you're vegetarian, chickpeas, tofu, things like that, because you're gonna get not just the protein, but you're gonna get the minerals, you're gonna get the vitamins. So those are the things that we want. Protein is just something to, again, supplement and just something to make it easier and more efficient. 
But yeah, there's nothing wrong with protein powder. Don't be afraid of yeah. the preservatives. Don't be afraid of the additives. Like they add it there for a reason, like to make the product takes, taste better for the texture, for to make it last longer. There's some additives and preservatives. Some are healthy, some are not. Some are toxic, some are not. So don't be afraid of everything. And don't believe everything that you hear online. There's just, yeah, there's too much yeah. misinformation. Definitely with the protein powder as well. I think it's important to take... I don't know, personally, and I recommend it to my clients, but as as natural as possible in terms of like, mm. um, you go, when you go into like health food store and you go to this section and you pick up your protein powder, you see all these like mass gainers and like all mm. these different crazy words, like just don't do that. If you um have dairy, just go for your way, keep it simple. And if you're a vegan or you're dairy intolerant, then just go for a nice plant-based one. Um, don't go crazy with all these extra funky names that are saying uh, yeah. do this and that, or like diet as well. Some of them say like diet whey or like diet protein powders. Mm -hmm. Just go for the flavor that you like and yeah, try and go as um as as natural as possible with that as well. And mm -hmm. obviously you want flavors and yeah. things because it makes it easier to neck back and it can definitely there's loads of recipes as well that you can make with protein so it's so handy so many you can bake cookies with it you can make breakfast muffins like uh just add it to your oats in the morning i i like doing that but um yeah i think the, yeah. the key re thing here is not to have a reliance on protein powder um I, Daniela, when I, as a vegan, actually, when I do travel, I actually take protein powder with me because depending mm. on what countries I go to, I might not find uh, in the restaurants or wherever we're going out, I might not find that I can even hit my protein intake. Like here in the UK, mm -hmm. it's super easy. Um, I've, I've done, I've been a vegan for like over 10 years. It's so easy. You can just get all your protein sources. You can create your own meals, your own recipes from home. It's easy peasy. But sometimes when you go abroad, like it's very difficult to, for, for the, sometimes for them to understand it, whether that's a language barrier or not. And like for me personally, and if you are vegetarian as well, or vegan, like just, and you want to be doubly sure that you're going to be okay. That just take a couple of like sachets, small sachets of protein powder. Or I just pack some in my, my suitcase. Yeah. And um, it's just handy to have. You can have that in the morning with your like breakfast and just know that, you know what, even as a baseline, you've had some protein in. And then mm -hmm. when you're going out to eat, whether you're having like you're on holiday, you're having pizzas or you're having whatever, then you you can just kind of stick to the basics with uh, your food as well. Make sure that you're um, you're satisfying your, yeah, your needs and your wants. Yeah, exactly. And that's why I love protein because you can take, it anywhere like literally anywhere you go you can take your protein with you whether you travel or you're just going away somewhere for the weekend mm -hmm. it's nice and convenient so yeah get that protein you don't have to but it's just nice and convenient okay, okay next question you want to go with the next question yeah sure okay so what are the best exercises to tone my core and reduce my belly fat big mm -hmm. great lots. question <laughs> i need to tone my yeah. belly and You've seen it, Daniela, like you open Instagram or TikTok these days and you see these horrendous yeah. videos and it's not even like planks, uh, crunches and twists yeah. and stuff. It's literally like doing these things where you're either wearing a waist belt or like some sort of rolling mm. pin and you roll your belly and they try and tell you that that's how you're going to Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So tell us, Daniela, how was, do you yeah. lose belly fat? Yeah, I've seen those videos and even on TikTok, it's mainly TikTok every single time. It's either those videos that you just mentioned or the Pilates. Um, do this Pilates and you're going to have this amazing six pack. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with Pilates, but it's not the one thing that's going to help you get that six pack. And there's also a question that I get from my clients because sometimes maybe I might not include core exercises at the beginning in the programs. And they're like, Danny, you know, you know that my goal is to lose body fat mainly fat around my stomach sorry but you're not giving me any core exercises like what's going on and the reason why core exercises so yeah so first there are no core exercises that are going to help you target that belly fat and they're going to help you tone that belly tone that body or tone your abdomen sorry 
exercises are not the magic thing that will help you get that six pack okay the only way that you're able to have that nice core that really nice flat stomach it's by number one focusing on your diet because focusing on this is going to ensure that we reduce that body fat and if you reduce that body fat you're going to reduce that belly fat that you have and you're going to be able to see your abdomen if you want to see that like your six pack if you want to see your six pack because every single one of us we have those muscles that's how the human body is but some of us have a little bit more body fat around that area which is why now you're not really seeing too much you just see that fat around there but once you decrease that you're going to be able to see that nice flat and it won't be fully flat especially for us women because we hold in a little bit more fat around there because we're able to reproduce but it's going to be nice and toned with core exercises they are amazing yes but <sighs> I like to include them mainly to help you gain more core strength, to help you have that really nice and strong core when you do different exercises like squats, compound movements that require you to have a very stable core. That's the main reason why I personally like to do core exercises. It's not because I want to get that amazing six pack, but it's because it's going to help me with my strength. It's going to help me with my performance at the gym, when I train legs, when I train upper body. Forget about doing crunches forget about doing planks, forget about doing leg races, forget about doing, well, all the things are there. You know, all those funny things that you see online or maybe that you've tried, I've tried them all, tried things that don't work, just diet, yeah. um, consistency and patience. And it's the simple things, the things that we mention every single time because that's the only thing that, the only things that you need to help you get those results. Like you don't need anything else, nothing. Yeah, yeah, no, just so true. And that's it. It's the boring, simple, boring stuff day in, day out. Yeah. There's no magic involved. The, the Well, there is magic. The magic is in consistency and actually doing what your coach has asked you to do. It's sticking to the plan. Yeah. <laughs> magic. Yeah. Um, but it's so interesting what you say about all like the core exercises. And Daniela, I am also a Pilates trained teacher. Mm -hmm. I'm, a, I'm an instructor. Yeah. So... Again, people will come to me and say, oh, I need like toned abs and stuff. And it's like, this is not why you're doing it. Like the reason why we train our core is the reason why you might train your bum, right? Mm -hmm. Because you are, well, when I talk about functionally, I know that people want to grow these massive glutes, right? Okay. But you could also grow massive abs if you want. But the thing is, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's a lot of it is down to, body fat covering that area now if you were to have a look yeah. at a bodybuilder who had shredded glutes like mm -hmm. shredded shredded glutes like these men that get on and stand on the like olympia stage bodybuilders yeah. their glutes if they add the body fat back on are gonna be friggin huge because they are well trained already and so even with someone with yeah. like a six pack as soon as you add the body fat on you're not going to be able to see it you won't be able to see any of that definition, but true glutes, mm -hmm. you know, when, when you've got minimal, minimal body fat, they are going to be absolutely shredded and they're not going to look nice. I'll be honest with you. They're not, they're yeah, not no. <laughs> <the> girls <laughs> want to look. You girls yeah. actually want body fat on your bum. Right. In addition to obviously having muscle there, but that is what gives you shape. And so that's like mm -hmm. running home is that body fat is, is natural it's what gives us curves it's what makes us feel womanly and uh, all this stuff about having a six pack but still having this like everything else that you want on a body it's very very hard uh we live in an age yeah. now where people do resort to um changing their bodies with uh either i don't know um fat dissolving or you know mm -hmm. These other cosmetic things, yeah. Liposuction as well has been around for years, but they are not going to help you functionally train your core. And that's really, really important because you need a nice stable trunk to help you when it comes to running, when it comes to squatting, when it comes to moving, to lifting, to to lifting your kids, to like um carrying your shopping bags, like absolutely everything. So let's stop focusing on being targeted and specific all the time 
in terms of like toning mm. and let's actually just think about the bigger picture our bodies are going to look how they're supposed to look based on our genetics but all we are doing is enhancing mm. those right me and daniela we could do exactly the same program we're never going to look the sa- same uh, daniela mm. looks incredible i absolutely love your body but i am never going to look like you because our genetics are different yeah and i think that's something that people forget like your genetics it's how your body is already built you know there's things that you can change you can shape your body 100 percent, yes and that's what bodybuilding is all about building that body but you cannot change things completely you cannot change things 100 percent. you can shape them but you cannot change them so that's something to keep in mind because genetics th- plays a big role but also like don't just rely on your genetics or don't blame your genetics if you're not getting the results that you want because yes even though genetics are there if you're not getting the work sorry if you don't get the results that you want ask yourself like am i doing the right program am i actually doing the work am i actually putting the time and effort am i actually being patient if you're doing all those things just keep waiting and keep being consistent but if you're not then start doing the things that you should be doing because it can be one of the other it can be maybe you just need to be a little bit more patient or maybe you need to actually get things done and stop procrastinating and stop you know feeling or acting a little bit lazy and just get things done that's all that's all you need okay next question um and this is actually what i just said but this question is to do with laziness how to overcome laziness mm, interesting okay I, so the key thing here, this 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 ties in with people relying on like, I wasn't motivated to go to the gym. Uh, it's taking that first step. And also the same people that have that laziness mentality are the same ones that want to sit back and wait for the outcome to come to them. They want that body handed to them. They want their fitness improved just by doing the the easy quick things quick fixes they also don't want to maybe also don't want to feel like the pain or the patience of having to stick to a fitness program and again it's really it's work on rebuilding your mindset and this isn't just about fitness it comes with every other aspect of your life as well if you have a lazy mentality what are you like when it comes to like going for a promotion at work? Are you, do you carry the same mindset there? It's Mm -hmm. likely. Yes. If I'm honest. So these things are not just related to fitness. Fitness is not exclusive. It's building the whole you and the whole picture of you. So it's also asking yourself that question. Like if I'm going to be lazy what do I want from my life? How do I want my life to look? And there is a certain amount of pain that we have to go through in life to be able to get the outcome that we desire and that we deserve. So obviously we want to make sure that we're doing the right things first, but we have to learn and understand patience. There's no quick fixes. And when it comes to laziness as well, like I I get it that, um, you know, it's, uh, difficult but people rely on motivation right they're just waiting for I didn't have motivation it's like none of us rely on motivation we we rely on responsibility now if we've got a goal that that we want to achieve or an outcome we have a responsibility to do the work to to get that done um what do you say about that Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like how you mentioned about mindset, because I personally think it's all about mindset. Like if you have this fixed mindset of I'm a lazy person, or I always procrastinate, I've always been this way in my life, you know, with uni, with work, with everything, I always procrastinate, then you're going to keep doing the same thing, because you have that identity that you, you are someone who's very lazy. You have that identity that you're someone who always procrastinates, that never gets things done. And that's why you, the actions that you're taking right now, it's showing the results that you're getting right now, which is you're not showing up for yourself. You're not going to the gym. You're not prepping your meals. You're not doing this. You're not doing this. You're not doing that because your identity, it's going to shape your actions. And then your actions is going to get you the results that you want. And then the results are going to reinforce your identity. So it's like this triangle that is just going to keep going up and down, up and down, up and down. But once you start 
changing your mindset. And once you start changing that fixed mindset into a growth mindset, and you start believing that actually I'm not lazy, you know, I can make it happen. I'm going to lose that weight. I'm going to gain that muscle mass. I'm going to get that job that I want to get or want to do you know, whatever whatever it is you want to do. Once you have that growth mindset and once you believe that you can make it happen, this is going to be the new identity that you want to have. This is going to be the relief of the person that you want to be, that you truly want to, you know, yeah, they truly want to be. And then your actions are going to start aligning with that person that you want to be. You're going to start going to the gym. You're going to start making that time for the gym or making that time to prep your meals because you're identifying yourself as a healthy person, as a fit person. So you're doing the things that a fit person will do, which is doing exactly what I just mentioned. And then you're going to take that action. And because you're taking that action, you're going to get the results. You're going to lose that weight. You're going to gain that muscle mass. You're going to look fit, fit and healthy. You want to feel amazing about yourself. And because you're feeling that way, you're going to keep saying and or keep having that identity of being fit and healthy. And you're going to keep doing that. And you're not going to be lazy anymore because you believe that you can do it. You will do it and you will make it happen. So it's all about that. Just change, change that mindset. And we tell you guys this all the time. It's all about what's up here. It's all about the mindset. It's all about what you think about yourself. It's all about what you believe about yourself. So keep that in mind. And something else Rachel mentioned right now, like, how you're doing or how you're acting right now with your fitness, we can guarantee is the same way that you're acting or you're doing with your job, with that new uh, job title that you have, or maybe with your relationships, maybe with something else, you know, whatever. But you're taking the same approach with everything, the same identity with everything. And this is not serving you. I can guarantee it's not serving you. Otherwise, you wouldn't be asking that question. So think about that and change your mindset because that will help you with everything everything that you do in your life like literally everything 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 yeah Yeah, absolutely love that but I think yeah yeah okay um I think that's all we have time for today right Mm -hmm. yeah yeah we're running out of time I Um, know (laughs) so guys thank you so much for joining us again with Daniela and I um Daniela we need to definitely get this booked in for next month as well we used to do this weekly um it's very difficult for us to do that right now because things are very, very busy. We're also running on mm. completely different time schedules. So where I am like yeah. waking up now, Daniela is like getting ready for bed. So that's the yeah. real struggle of, <laughs> yeah. of getting this together. But I absolutely love um, doing this podcast together. So for those of you that have been listening, please follow us on Instagram, if you've, especially if you've just stumbled across this podcast episode. You can find Daniela at Daniela Del Carpio and myself, Richie Bra. We will leave our names in the description. And that way you can reach out to us on Instagram, give us a follow, have a look at our content as well. Um, more tips and tricks and videos. You can see mm-hmm. our client transformations, etc. And we can you can see also how we run our fitness programs for, for you guys as well. So thank you for listening. This has been Pod Talks and we will be back next time. See you soon.